Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. His name is Hudson Bell, and he's from the Hudson Bell Mortgage Team, and he is an amazing person when it comes to knowledge about home buying and mortgages, and he has such great things to share with us today. So, Hudson, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah, thanks, Stacey, um, and I appreciate you bringing me onto the podcast. It's definitely something I've been super excited about for the past couple of months here. And um, But yeah, I mean, I got into mortgage about eight years ago. I got in pretty young. Uh, I grew up, I like to say I grew up in mortgage on a, a big team in the North DFW area. Um, had a lot of, a lot of um, really experience. Uh, good experiences come across my desk just being on that team because there was uh, we were doing probably about 125 to 150 leads per month. So there was a lot of opportunity for growth there and, and education real quickly. Um, and then, you know, stepped away to, to become my my own loan officer, um, you know, here probably over the last year or two. And, and I've been just generating my own business and working on building that uh, that sphere here in, in Fort Worth, actually. Uh, so that's kind of where my main focus has been is in Fort Worth and BFW area, but I definitely uh, am able to help anybody all over Texas. And we do have uh, referral partners all over the, the United States as well. So definitely have been able to to help people, you know, again, in New York and in Florida and New Mexico. So just to, to name a few of the states that we've we've done some work with and. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And I know that, you know, so much has been going on with the um, the home, you know, the market right now. And so many people are afraid to purchase. They think it's a really bad time to purchase. You know, people are having, you know, they they want to purchase, but they see how, you know, inflation has, has taken the rise of the cost of houses and, and they're afraid to kind of move forward and buy their first home or even, you know, try to sell their house and get something else because with the prices the way they are right now, you know, they don't know what to expect and they're afraid that they're not going to get the the deal that they could get if they wait a little longer. But I remember you were saying previously, but I, you could actually get a really good deal right now. That's true. Absolutely. And, and you know, a lot of people think that waiting until interest rates start to come down is, is the perfect time or, or think that once interest rates, you know, hit that that next say four or 5% level is, is going to be the time to buy. But in reality, you've got all of these home buyers waiting on the sidelines for that. Yeah. So it's you and everybody else who's waiting, who's going to be flooding the market when that does happen. So you're going to be back into the over asking multiple offer situations. And right. so you're going to be in that aspect, overpaying for a home while sure getting a, a cheaper interest rate. But right. if you can get in on a home now at a reasonable price, you know, without having to get into multi offer situations, then not only are you able to get that home at asking price or potentially lower, uh, but you can also ask the seller for stuff like concessions, you know, asking them to pay for a buy down on your interest rate, either permanently or temporarily. Right. We actually offer, you know, multiple different temporary rate buy down programs. We offer all the way up to a three year program. So basically, wow. you know, if you're if you're looking at it and and this is something that the seller does have to pay for. So it's something you need to get enough seller concessions for and that's you know we work with the the realtor on our end to be able to mm -hmm. calculate exactly how much in concessions we need to ask for but essentially say we get a two-year buy down right and you know market rates are are sitting at seven percent right now right you, for the first year of your mortgage you're looking at a five percent interest rate so your payment and interest rate is going to be based on that five percent and then the second year goes up to that six percent and then the uh third year and following goes back up to that market 7% interest rate. So there's definitely ways to, again, get those lower interest rates and keep those monthly payments lower yeah. while being able to, to purchase in this market, even though, you know, home prices or interest rates might not be exactly where you want them to be. What are some suggestions for, for new buyers and for people who are maybe considering, maybe they want to downsize or they want to move to a different location, you know, if, and they really, you know, they're looking at the market right now and they're getting a little scared about, you know, uh, making the next move because they feel, you know, right now is not the right time. Do you have some suggestions of how they could actually, you know, start moving in the right direction and get the best deal possible? Absolutely. Yeah. So for, you know, for people who already own a home, you know, and I hear this all the time is, you know, 
I refinanced in 2021 and got a, a two or three percent interest rate. I yeah. don't want to give that up. And I get that. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want to give that up either. But right. at the same time, if you were able to say either A, save up a five percent down payment or B, if you have enough equity in your primary home currently, you can take a HELOC or just borrow against the equity in your home for that 5% down payment to go ahead and purchase a new primary and then turn that 3% interest rate that you've got on that, on your, your departing residence into your investment property. And that's how, that's one of the best ways to start building an investment portfolio in general, regardless of where the interest rates are, right. is turn your current primary into your first investment home when you move on. Yeah. A know. lot of people just, you know, sell and then, and then, you know, move that equity to the next home, which, which is great, you know, don't get me wrong, but it, it, especially for those people that want to build that generational wealth and, and start that investment portfolio, that yeah. is the best way to do it. I don't think people ever, you know, a lot of people I speak to don't really think of it like that. I think that's one of the things that I kind of miss, you know, because people really think about, okay, I'm going to buy my house, you know, I'm going to live there. Oh, you know, I'm ready to move yet. I'd like to, you know, go to a different location. And the first thing I'm thinking about is just selling it and making a little bit of profit if they can, and then go into the next property and, you know, and just moving and taking the next step. But no one really thinks about using that property as an investment property. I, all the people I've spoken to have never even brought that up in conversation. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And and typically too, you know, depending on where your equity position lies, where your interest rate is on the departing residence, you know, the renting that residence out typically will end up paying for the home that you purchase as your new primary. So, you know, you've only really having to pay for the the lower of the two mortgage payments. Right. That's very true. That's very true. Now, there's a lot of people out there, like even, you know, uh, veterans and and people from the VA and, and you know, they have a hard time, you know, um, purchasing homes. And they, I know there's a lot of programs out there for them. You know, maybe they could talk a little bit about that and, and you know, educate people because there's so many people out there from the military and they struggle, especially when they're making the transition into the regular world. You know, life is so different from the military world. And trying to, you know, really, you know, establish a family and and purchase, you know, you know, a, a house or an apartment or a condo, whatever the case may be, you know, they're having difficulties because they they can't afford it and they're 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 struggling. So, what are some of your suggestions? Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm actually a veteran myself. Um, you know, I always served in the military right at a at a high school and. Um, and so I'm very definitely passionate about being able to educate and help those veterans into homes because you're right. I mean, there's just not a lot of education out there on that. Even the military, you know, when I was exiting the military, of course, I got sat down and they, um, you know, they give us all of this information about what's available on the civilian side for us. And yeah you know, come to find out, especially now working in the the mortgage industry, that most of that information is either wrong or it's only part of the information that we actually need to right. be successful on the uh, on the civilian side. So, um, you know, for veterans specifically, of course, you've got the VA loan, right? That's a that's a hundred percent financing, zero percent down yeah. loan for those veterans. That way, you're only really having to to front or bring to closing those those closing costs, which um, is significantly helpful. And again, you know, during this time period, during this market, that's something that can be negotiable for the seller. So. That's something where I've had plenty of, of VA clients come to closing with, with almost zero money up front just because they've gotten the sellers to cover their closing costs and they don't have a down payment. So they're really only having to pay for stuff like the appraisal or the inspection, which you know can come out to be less than $1,000 total. Wow. Um, but also it is military appreciation month. So for those, those VA clients that are maybe looking to build a home, uh, if they come through and, you know, at least start talking to us anytime between now and May 31st, uh, we'll actually cover the cost of the appraisal on that custom build home. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I, I know, you know, years ago I had written an ebook and I had written a book about helping people with um, that are just, you know, that came out of the military and, and trying to purchase a home and trying to, you know, go back into civilian life. And it was so difficult for so many of them. They oh, just absolutely. 
the, you know, where to begin. And uh, it's so good that they have, you have so many programs, but it, we really have to get those programs really out there. So, you know, if they go to a person like you, you'll have a list of programs and you'll explain everything, you know, step by step. Cause I think that's where people get lost too. I think one, people are embarrassed to ask questions. For some reason, I find men more than women, women will ask mm -hmm. questions questions no problem men sometimes they they get a little embarrassed about asking questions but what are those important questions they should ask you yeah i mean so i mean you said it like what programs are available um and then you know those those people also too one of the big things that i see especially with veterans or first time home buyers is credit you know most people don't either a know where their credit needs to be or think that their credit's too low. And in you know, some cases it might be, but at the same time, we're also there, we're here to help, you know, get you into the position to buy a home. We're not just here to tell you yes or no, you can buy a home. Yeah. We're here to tell you maybe no, you can't buy a home right this instant, but here's what you can do to work up to that, you know, that that uh, that opportunity where you are able to purchase a home. Right. So, you know, like just uh just actually, I think it was two months ago, I had a, a VA client. Their credit was, I think, 503 at the time, which, you know, VA doesn't technically have a, a credit limitation, but for the VA automated underwriting system, typically mm -hmm. you've got to have at least like a 580 is what I see most often for the 100% financing to get the automated approval. Right. Now we do have the ability to do manual underwrites for VA homes. <laughs> um, but typically, again, those have to have compensating factors if you do have that, that lower credit tier. Unfortunately, this client did not have the compensating factors enough for a 503 score. So I worked with them over the next couple of months to build that score up to, I think, a 564 is what we got them to. And at that point, they did have enough compensating factors where the 564 was able to go through the VA manual underwriting process. So I got them into the home. It's a beautiful new build. Um, and they were super excited. And it's just one of those things where, you know, those people who think that maybe their home purchase is unattainable or they think that, you know, oh, maybe over the next couple of years, because we've got a lot of work to do. Right. It's something where, again, we're able to cater a, a, a pathway to to put those people in the position that they need to be a lot of times sooner than they think that is possible. I don't think people realize that there are there are companies out there that will help them build their credit scores too. Mm -hmm. So if you have low credit scores, don't feel like it's the end of the world because you know from my understanding, there are a lot of companies out there that will help you go through your, your credit scores, see if there's mistakes, see where they can repair things for you. And they actually can get you to a level and a number that will actually be suitable to actually get a good mortgage. Is that true? That is very true. Yeah. So so typically, and in, in what I'll do is if it's something where you know, maybe there's a small handful of things for them to work on. Right. I'll work with them myself. Okay. Um, I'll give them their tools that they need to get their credit where it needs to be. Because we have on our end, you know, of course we can pull their credit, look at their credit right. report. Um, but also we have credit simulators that are fairly accurate. Um, and I say fairly fairly accurate because it, it, it's all time-based, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, if we can get everything updated quickly and, you know, updated at the bureau level manually within, right. you know, a couple of weeks, then typically it's going to be pretty on point. But if it takes a, a month or two to get those things updated, you know, a lot of stuff can happen in that month or two as well. So it may not come back right yeah. at that score. But that being said, um, you usually with the, the credit simulator, I'm able to help out with those small handful of things to to get them where they need to be. But if it's something where, you know, they've really got a lot going on, a lot of late payments, you know, handful of collections, right? Stuff like that is is definitely where I I have two referral partners. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got one that's a little bit more expensive, but they really get the job done. And then right. I have one that's definitely more affordable. Uh, they still do good work. It just might take a little bit more time. So there's right. there's a lot of resources out there who are there specifically to help you get your credit in line for, you know, whether that be a home purchase or just personal reasons. Right. So for, for people, what would be step one that they really, if they want to purchase a home or if they have a home and, and they're thinking about selling, what would be the first thing that they really need to focus on? Yeah. So step one, you know, I, I like to say is, is, you know, 
call a loan officer, get your finances in order. You know, yeah. a lot of people think that step one is, is contact a realtor. And, you know, well, I understand that, you know, most of the time, you know, you ask anybody in a room, Hey, how many realtors do you know? Typically it's at least two or three, you know, yeah. but how many loan officers do you know? That number dwindles because <laughs> you know. So I understand contacting a realtor first, and typically the realtor does a really good job of of then getting them in contact with the loan officer. But you know, contacting somebody to help get your finances in order, figure out you know what's my afford affordability. Can I qualify for a home right now, or is there some work that I need to do? Um, figure out how many you know how much funds you have to have available for down payment and closing costs. Yeah. Um. And and again, just kind of get that that realistic expectation on the table with your home purchase. Right. And even yeah. go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, no, finish. I was just gonna say even even with people who who are, you know, six months out, it, it's never too soon to talk to, you know, get your finances in order for the home right. purchase. Because again, you may have you may think that you have perfect credit and that Oh, I'll qualify super easy. Yeah. And sometimes that's the case, but then sometimes, you know, it may not be as perfect as you think. And, and you might have work to do over those next six months and you, you have those next six months to, to get things in order versus, you know, uh, touching base to, to try and get qualified when you finally find a home right? and then come to find out maybe you don't qualify right that instant. And so yeah. it, it can be definitely heartbreaking if you had your heart set on uh, on that home you found. Right. Now in today's society with inflation, the way it is or the way prices are, is it hard for people to get a mortgage? Because a lot of people, you know, you know, that's one of the biggest fears I hear too, is that they think they might not qualify because the banks aren't the way they used to be. And, and things are a lot harder to, to uh, attain a mortgage. You know, what's the, the, the truth and the, and the myths with that statement? So there are a lot of companies and banks that have kind of tightened up their uh, their guidelines, and and what those guidelines are for those banks and those companies that have really restricted them are more so overlays, right? Mm -hmm. So we all get our our direct guidelines from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, HUD, Jenny Mae, you know, whoever the investor is of these different loans, um, and then there are certain overlays that most of the time you see those big banks will have, right? Like if say, you know, Fannie Mae says that their minimum credit score is 620 for a conventional loan, you know, most of the time you go to a big bank and they're they're going to require at least 660 to 680. Um, we're, we're direct servicers. So we don't have much in terms of overlays. You know, again, we got a VA loan done at a 564 credit score. There's not a lot of banks or, yeah. or companies out there who are willing to do something like that. So while it might be harder and you might have to make a few more calls, it's definitely not impossible. Um, and and it's definitely it is very attainable right now, you know, especially because of the fact that there are so many programs out there to help. Right. You know, cross country is very progressive in the fact that if there's something out there that is is running in the market and helping out buyers or helping out realtors, then it's something that they're willing to try. So it's something that they implement pretty quickly instead of just yeah. sitting there and waiting to see how it goes. Right. Um, so it's one of those, again, it's one of those things where there really are so many resources and programs out there to help. Again, with say that VA, you know, VA home loan, 0% mm -hmm. down payment. All you got to do is, is bring closing costs to the table. Even if you can't find a seller to cover your closing costs, there still are, are down payment assistance programs available for, for VA home purchases. And mm -hmm. because you don't have a down payment, those down payment assistance programs can go towards your your closing costs. Right. Same with FHA and conventional. You've got multiple different down payment assistance programs available that can significantly help um, mitigate your cash out of pocket on a home purchase. Right. And with with, with Hudson Bell uh, Mortgage Team, do you do more than one service? So when they go to you, it's not just getting a mortgage, but you kind of, you know, you have a lot of services to kind of walk them through from the beginning to the end type of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm here, my team is here to, uh, you know, if, if necessary, hold your hand through the whole, whole home purchase process. I work solely off of my cell phone. Um, all clients, business partners have my cell phone number. I'm available daytime, nighttime, weekends. I mean, I, I try to make myself as available as possible and, and emphasize that with my team as well, just because of the fact that 
especially for a first time home buyer or somebody who hasn't gone through the home purchase process in a while, yeah. home buying experience can be such a, an emotional experience, but also it can be very intimidating. Yeah. And so you, you're probably going to have a lot of questions. You're, you're probably going to want to reach out and just have that, that reassurance through the home purchase process. And, you know, I'm there to, to help in whatever aspect I can. Right. And, you know, it, it, it seems like, you know, when you, when you have a team like yours, it takes a lot of the stress off because it seems like, you know, a lot of people that I speak to, you know, they just don't know where to begin. It's like being on a highway and there's six lanes and, you know, you hear, you hear a different story from everybody, you know, right. like, do it this way. Oh, no, 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 do, do, do it this way. Oh, you should you do, do it this way. And before you know it, you know, if you hear more than one or two things, your, your, your brain starts getting clustered and it can be very overwhelming. And some people can just walk away from it because it's too overwhelming and you don't want that to happen so oh, absolutely yeah I mean there, between you know family members friends online I mean there's there's so many opinions or misinformation out there and you know well well sure you know you especially if you've got a good confidant whether that be a family member or friend you want to get their opinion especially if they've been through the home purchase process you know more than likely they've they've done what you're doing right and they've right you know, done some research or talked to somebody who, who has given them some good information. But, you know, when it really comes down to it, don't 100% rely on that information because, you know, every, everybody's home purchase experience is different, right? Yeah. You know, somebody purchasing a home, say in New York, there might not be the same different, you know, same programs available here in Texas or somebody purchasing in Florida, you might have, you know, a different, a different process to purchase that home. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a, a VA client actually the other day who her dad just recently bought a home mm -hmm. and he was able to get the seller to cover all closing costs. He was able to offer like 50,000 under ask. He got a heck of a deal. Um, and so she, you know, she thinks that she can come in and do the exact same thing, but he also purchased in a completely different market, um, different area. I mean, so yeah. he was able to find a seller who, you know, was, was really wanting to just offload the home and and that's great. Right. Don't right. get me wrong. It's not impossible to, to come in and, and ask for 50,000 under asking and then get all of your selling, mm -hmm. uh, all of your closing costs covered. It's not impossible. It's just that to that level of, of, um, of a deal, right. Is, right. is far and few between, you know? Yeah. So she's having to come up to the reality that, okay, m maybe I'll have to offer asking price yeah. or, you know, maybe even five to 10,000 under asking price is reasonable enough to, to want them to get to accept my offer. Cause yeah. you know, at the same time, the realtor doesn't, you know, doesn't want to be submitting those offers because that's also their reputation on the line. If they're a, yeah. a good realtor in the the business and they're submitting, you know, these low ball offers, then, you know, it, it just, it, it, it puts them in a position where we're listing agents might not take them seriously. So, right. <laughs> Yeah, I I think you're you're right when it, when it comes to you know all when it comes to real uh, when it comes to uh, realty and, and it comes to getting mortgages it could be a very scary experience because you you just don't have all the knowledge but when you have all the knowledge you know it could really be very helpful and you know like like you said like if you had to really give like a couple of you know t takeaways on what people should really focus on when they're thinking about buying a home whether they they're you know a, a VA or whether they're a first time buyer what are some important facts that you think you know people should really keep in mind absolutely so you know of course most people are going to be focused on the interest rate and i understand that but right now if you're trying to purchase a home focus on what you can afford on a monthly basis that's yeah. going to be the biggest thing because if you can afford it even even if it's uncomfortable but if you yeah. if you can afford it for the next say year year and a half interest rates will start coming down. Yes. It's an election year, right? That's historically going to be one of those things where yeah. interest rates start to, to decline. The economy just starts to get a little bit better, right? Yeah. Um, and so that'll put us in a good position to where then we can help that client refinance and get mm -hmm. to a, a more comfortable monthly payment. So if, if a home purchase is your goal, don't let the interest rate hold you back. That's the 
biggest thing right now is don't let that interest rate hold you back. Figure out what you can afford on a monthly basis, right. even if it is a little bit uncomfortable. You know, of course, we're not going to put you in a position where, where you know, you're getting into something that you can't afford. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if it's, you know, a couple hundred dollars outside of, you know, what you would kind of set your budget for, but it's the, you know, home of your dreams or it's perfect for your family. Yeah. Go ahead and, and you know, take the risk. You right. know, because again, we're there to, to to watch the market for you. And as soon as it becomes advantageous, go ahead and help you refinance. Right. And I guess that's one of the biggest hacks too, is just, you know, looking to refinance and, and mm-hmm. you know, waiting for the, the right time where you can refinance, where the interest rate is starting to get lower and, you know, not just focusing on the present, but, you know, just keeping your eye out what's going on, you know, in our society when it comes to real estate and then really look at the interest rates and not so much look at other things, you know, and just focus on the, the interest rates and when the best time is to refinance so you can get the better deal, it seems. Exactly. Yeah. And again, that's, you know, that's something like one of my, one of my monitors here is, is only for the, uh, the mortgage backed security market. And that's, you know, the big market that we watch as, as mortgage professionals to kind of see what's going on in the industry, you know, where's the market going to be going. And so um, it is solely dedicated to that so that I can on a daily basis, make sure that I'm keeping up with everything. And, you know, I'll check, you know, probably twice a month, maybe three times a month, depending on how volatile the market is to see if there are any clients in my pipeline, you know, any past clients that would, uh, would, you know, be in an advantageous position to, to refinance at that point. Yeah. Um, so it's something that, you, you know, you don't even as the client have to have to monitor or worry about. That's something we try and take on, on, on our end. And we'll reach out to you when it becomes advantageous to refinance and, and help save you the money. Um, you know, one of the things too, is a lot of people, you, you know, they're like, okay, well, sure I can refinance, but then I have to pay all of these closing costs again. Yeah. And you know, yes, you do have closing costs involved in a refinance, but, you know, one of the other things that we're doing with cross country is, is I think through June 30th right now. And, and uh, to be honest, they keep extending it. So, um, you know, that's not mm-hmm. necessarily a set date, but as of right now through June 30th, if you purchase with us, we'll cover our cost of the refinance. So that's about uh, $1,650 is typically our underwriting and processing oh, cost wow. to refinance. Yeah. So then you have, uh, what's left over pretty much is the title and um, escrow setup are the two big items. And those are rolled into the new loan. So it's not an out-of-pocket cost. For right. You. Um, the only out-of-pocket cost on a refinance is going to be an updated appraisal if we need one. Right. And because typically, you know, especially if you're purchasing now and you're refinancing a year, year and a half, Mm-hmm. more than likely you probably don't need an updated appraisal. So you could refinance without any out-of-pocket cost. Wow. So, you know, those are things that I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, so right. basically you could have, they could, you could, they can take you on and you could take them on as a client and you'll be watching there, you know, what's mm-hmm. going on. So they don't have to, you know, get stressed out and constantly, you know, focus on, everything about what's going on in the real estate and the interest rates and what's going on with mortgages. They could live their daily lives. They could focus on what they have to and and focus on their jobs and their families and blah, 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 but still have, you know, you watching their back. And when things get better, you give them a call and say, Hey, you got an option here. That's right. That's absolutely right. And, you know, again, that's, that's, that's part of just how I've, I've tried to build my, my business model is just yeah. taking as much of the stress and, you know, anxiety of, of anything surrounding either the home purchase or home financing in general, you know, yeah. off of the client and, you know, putting that on me, you know, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm happy to deal with because I, I deal with it on a daily basis. So to me, it's, you know, it's just every day, it's not a, a stressful thing to, for me to deal with, but I understand right. that it is for, you know, most, most clients or home buyers or, you know, people looking into home financing. So um, if I can take most of that off of you, then that's, <laughs> that makes me happy. That makes typically the client happy. Oh yeah. You know, it sure. gives them a better experience. I think that's one of the main things is that, you know, everyone has so many things going on in their life. If you could just, people are more than happy to, you know, pay a service or just work with a company that's going to take on that responsibility because it gives them one less thing to worry about and makes life a lot easier. That's right. That's absolutely right. 
So where can people get in contact with you if they want, if they're really interested and they, they really see that, you know, that this is something that could be really beneficial in their own personal lives, where can they contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So I've got a, a couple of different means. I've got, of course, my website, uh, the Hudson Bell team.com. Uh, you can have my direct cell phone number. Again, that's 469-416-7594. Call me or text me. You know, if I don't answer at the time, leave me a voicemail or shoot me a text. I'll make sure to give you a call back as soon as possible. Um, you can also email me at hudson.bell at ccm.com. Um, and then, you know, of course, you can follow any of my social medias. Most of them are under Hudson Bell CCM. Now, um, I know you deal with residential, but do you do with any commercial or is it all residential? So I do only deal with residential. Uh, the only commercial that we really dabble in is mixed use. So if you're looking to buy a commercial property and it has a, a residential uh, or it has a residence on it where you're basically going to be living and operating your business on the property, that's something we can help out with. But, you know, standard, you know, commercial commercial loans, I do have good referral partners for. I just don't right. unfortunately do them myself. This is awesome. I, you know, I really learned a lot. And before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to, you know, maybe um, tell the, the listeners listening to, uh, today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, one of the one of the big things, too, that I've recently been trying to educate, especially first time home buyers on is that they have multiple options. You know, when, when people hear FHA, right, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that that stands for like first time home buyer association, yeah. you know, some sort of first time home buyer program. And while it is catered towards those people that, you know, might not be in the perfect position to buy a home, yeah. uh, it's not their only option, right? So right. FHA has a, a, a minimum down payment of three and a half percent, which is great for a first time home buyer. Yeah. But if you're a first time home buyer, conventional financing also has a minimum down payment of 3% versus the standard 5% for non first time home buyers. Oh, wow. So not only, yeah, so not only can that, you know, help you know, lower a little bit that cash out of pocket, especially if it is tight. But, you know, also for um, for those conventional home buyers or first time home buyers, PMI is one of the big things, right? So you hear PMI all of the time. And and for for people buying a home who don't know, FHA is going to have mortgage insurance still. It doesn't have PMI because PMI is private mortgage insurance. What right. FHA has is mortgage insurance premium. That is federally set mortgage insurance. So you're going to have a, a set rate that your mortgage insurance is going to be for the life of the loan versus if you're able to purchase conventional financing. Yeah. Yes, again, you'll have that mortgage insurance, but as soon as you hit that 20% equity, that mortgage insurance will go away. Oh, wow. That's really good to know. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So there again, it, it's more so what I want to educate people on is, is all of the different options available, you know, and that's, that's why it's worth, you know, giving me or, or, you know, whatever other loan officer you're working with a call and, and just asking what are my options? Because a lot of people, especially first time home buyers think that there only might be one or, yeah. or two options out there. Yeah. But in reality, there are so many, so many that we can help, you know, cater towards your, your specific situation. You know, and even for me, I'm not a first time buyer, but I consistently learn new things all the time. Like you don't realize how many different options are out there. And I think people have to realize that, you know, there's a lot more than they think, you know, they just, you know, they hear about the standard stuff, but they don't realize that there's so many other ways and, and so many other options out there that could help them financially. Absolutely. I mean, even as even as a self-employed person, you know, this is the biggest thing out there is, you know, you have all of these self-employed people who, you know, they, they don't show much money on their tax returns. Right. Yeah. But, um, you know, so that doesn't doesn't help them when trying to purchase a home, because that's what we look at. Right. When you're self-employed, we typically are looking either at your schedule C on your, your personal tax returns or mm -hmm. looking at, you know, your 1120s, if you have a separate business tax return or your 1065s. And, you know, we look at your bottom line number as a self-employed person when, yeah. when you know, calculating your tax returns. And uh, typically the bottom line number is, is significantly lower than what you're actually making as a self-employed person. So we've got all of these different programs available, whether that be bank statement programs, 1099 programs, PM programs or asset-based programs available for, you know, self-employed people to, to help them purchase a home um, and utilize the income that they're actually receiving. 
Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I didn't yeah. even realize they did that. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, and, absolutely. Now, before we go, can you tell everybody where they can contact you once again, their, your website and your phone number? Of course. Yeah. Website is uh, thehudsonbellteam.com. And my phone number is 469 416 Seven five nine four. Again, that's four six nine four one six seven five nine four. And we will have all the information in the description box. So if you want to get a hold of Hudson and you have questions to ask, he'll be there and he'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Hudson, this has been amazing. I hope to have you back on the show because I think you have a lot to offer. I think you have a lot of different options out there that you could teach people because I don't think people really understand how many options there's actually out there. And even when you deal with a realtor, like you said, they go right to the realtor and the realtor may only mention two or three options. They're not going to go through the whole thing and, and analyze everything and say, here, here are all your options. And, you know, so they only choose from two to three when there could be so many more out there that could actually help them in their financial, you know, so they can work within their financial means and not get so stressed out. That's right. That's right. And I, I thank you again, Stacey, for having me. This has been this has been an awesome experience. And you're right. I mean, I, I absolutely would love to be on the podcast again in the future. And, you know, if there's more specific questions that that your listeners have or specific topics they want to hear about, you know, I'm more than happy to, you know, make a, a catered, you know, topic for, for for whatever it is. I mean, there are no stupid questions. You know, a lot of people are, yeah. you know, like you said earlier, asked to scared to ask those questions because they think they're stupid, but it it's really not. You know, right. I didn't know anything about mortgage before I got into it. You know, I barely yeah. knew how to spell it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and, uh, and, but it's one of those things where, you know, it's my job to now know these things. So yeah. of course I know them, but right. it's, you know, it's not your job as a home buyer to necessarily know them. So yeah. ask those, those stupid questions or, you know, stuff that you might, you know, think everybody should know, because I promise right. you everybody else probably has those same questions yeah there's there's a, quite a few books out there like you know uh, you know uh for computers and this and that and other things you know it's like 101 stupid questions to ask and it's all about the common questions that people every day want to know and they're afraid to ask and that's the that's the problem don't feel stupid just because you you're you're asking a question that's how we learn that's how we advance that's how we elevate you know so there is no stupid question if you don't know it Obviously, you need to know the right answer. So just ask it. Right. Absolutely. I 100% agree. <laughs> well, Hudson, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I look forward to possibly having you on the show again. And, you know, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Stacey. And thank you again. Happy to come and, and come out and talk anytime. All right. I can't wait. You have a great day. You too. Bye, Stacey. Bye-bye.